Here's a tale of two people who are facing prison time and not facing prison time. You got one guy who talked to his attorney and his attorney goes, hey man, we could just make this story go away. It's no big deal. Pay her $150,000. I'll take care of it. You could just pay me in legal fees and we'll just wipe it like that. I'll pay her. We could square up legal fees, no problem. And then we did that. And the guy who paid the legal fees is facing jail time. Another guy, another guy, illegally funded gain of function research. He covered it up when he got caught. There was a global pandemic. It leaked. Then he force fed everyone a treatment which subsequently got proven to have not been what people said it was. He demonized everybody who was against it. He demonized anyone who said there was any other any other treatment. He got them kicked off of social media. The, the number of people res- that he was responsible for destroying their lives and careers is not countable. And he's not facing jail time. All right, we're just going to go off the cuff here today because Rogan has been talking to some very interesting characters during a time where the entire thing is blowing up in everyone's face. Fauci. Fauci would be looking at prison, okay? If anybody is unclear on this, on what has been going on with Anthony Fauci in the last couple days, like, I don't know, three days since he's been on Capitol Hill, there is no question, like the, what they are trying to put the big guy in jail for right now, if you compare, if you compare what this guy did, you know, our buddy over here, Dana White's friend that we give 30, you know, 30 seconds standing ovations to at UFC events. If you compare what he did to what Anthony Fauci did, and if he actually ends up going to j- it's it's unbelievable. We're going to get into what Anthony Fauci did, but we're going to start off with uh, some some comedy here, okay? So, like, Rogan's been talking to these guys about Fauci, about everything that happened during lockdowns, and then in this case, he's talking about AOC. This is amazing, dude. Sometimes, you know, it's like you have all these different characters in these in these things, and, like, some of them you want to, uh, you know, you want to, like, they make you really upset, right? Like, I Like, they make you genuinely upset. Like, if you think about... When we get into the the cover up and the specifics of like how caught red handed Anthony Fauci is like, and if you think about what happened to you and your family in the pandemic, like, and and it doesn't make you angry, then uh, we're gonna have a different kind of conversation. But there's also the comedy side now, as you know, this whole thing unravels for what used to be this vice grip of weirdos who had control of everything. And like people like AOC, as an example, will do things like what I'm about to show you where she spazzes out on Capitol Hill and you just get to laugh, dude. We just get to collectively laugh. We're also going to talk about uh, Chris Cuomo, who, you know, is trying to do this big redemption arc. You know, oh, I didn't say all those things. I didn't say all those things. I love the fact that Rogan just goes right at these people, dude. Because as soon as Rogan does, it gives all of us the ability to talk about them. But anyway, we're going to start with AOC really quick here, and then we're going to go on to other things. Watch this, dude. This is unbelievably amazing. He starts talking shit. Marjorie Taylor Greene says, maybe you couldn't read it because of your fake eyelashes. And the other one was like, oh, no, you didn't. Strike that shit from the record. And they said, <laughs> And then she said, she, I said she has a butch body. The Marjorie Taylor. Has, but she did it in the, like, the catty passive aggressive way. You know where she goes, You know we're here about oh, just a, uh, I don't think wanna, you know what you're here for. Well, you the one talking about. I, guess I, I think your fake eyelashes little. are messing up. No, what you're I ain't nothing. Hold on, hold on. Listen. <laughs> Order, Mr. Chairman. That's beneath would even you. Order, 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 order of your committee. Order. Okay, so is that a big deal? Is that a big deal, you guys? Is that like a super huge deal? You know, I think your fake eyelashes are messing. Like she's basically saying, like you can't read what's in front of you because your fake eyelashes are too big. Okay, is that like you know, it's on Capitol Hill, probably not. You know, it's kind of like, come on, but who cares, right? Not that big a deal. Watch AOC's reaction to this dude. Order beneath even you. Keep going. I do have a point of order, and I would like uh, to move to to take down Miss Green's words. That is absolutely okay. unacceptable. How dare you uh, 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 attack the physical fan, appearance Wilson's of another fan. person? Are your Move feelings hurt? her words down. Aww. Oh, oh, girl, baby, girl. Oh, really? <laughs> don't even play baby girl gonna, i don't think we are gonna that. move and we're gonna take your words down Thank i you second that motion that's amazing don't start. even oh play. my god dude it's priceless who are these people who where 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 do you learn to do the things that these people do i don't understand like i would never be, i would never have the the like the gall to do that you know like to be like in front of a, a room of people to act that offended by anything you know what i mean they're like how dare you like I, I really don't think that there is a thing that could happen that where i would lead with that sentence ever you know like or that opening 
How dare you? That would have to be, uh, I, I don't know. I don't think it's possible. They were like, Jesse, you and I both know that you put a hand on a child. And I'd be like, how dare you accuse me of a thing like that? I would just be like, no, I didn't. You fucking weirdo. What are you talking about? Like, that, I just, I don't have the, I don't have that in me, man. I do have the, it in me to laugh in their face, though, every time because it is so ludicrous. So I want to get not sidetracked here because I definitely wanted to get to this where Rogan and Tony Hitchcliffe start talking about the, the Fauci stuff. So I'm basically just going to insert myself into their conversation because it is uh, absolutely unbelievable what has been going on. And I want to make sure as many people know about it as possible. So let's uh, listen to them talk about it. And I'm going to tell you what I know as well. Right. Yeah. You've been watching the Fauci hearings? No. Whoa, dude, it's wild. It's wild. What what's going on? Still, with that? still like deeply in denial about everything. He's, I mean, they're confronting him about emails they got about deleting emails in preparation of a Freedom of Information Act request. They got emails from people that he worked with saying, you know, that uh, don't worry, Fauci is too smart to talk about this stuff on emails. You'll either have to deliver something to him or meet him in person. There's all this like weird deception shit. There's people that said this is clearly leaked from a lab. Look at the fair and cleavage sites. This, they have to be that, that that's put into the virus to make it more infectious to human beings. They're talking about it in the email. And then that same guy, after talking to Fauci, like three days later, is like, it's ridiculous to think this came from a lab. <laughs> this is right. clearly from a natural or And they're all talking about discrediting people who are talking about the lab leak theory. Yeah. So let me just, uh, let me throw, throw a little bit more clarity on exactly what's been going on. All right. So Fauci had to testify. Okay. So he got brought up in front of Congress the same way that any of these other guys uh, that you've seen have these, you know, big public testimonies and you're like nothing's gonna happen from this you know like nothing's gonna happen i almost feel like they do these uh these big show trials to make it seem like maybe something will happen and get people to shut up and they only do it to people who are actually never going to face any repercussions whatsoever like i'm honestly i'm i, I am going to say that right now in advance of talking about how absolutely stone red-handed guilty that uh, that anthony fauci is because what's crazy is like, think of a time when someone has gone up in front of Capitol Hill recently, had to answer for things that were clearly massive deceptions or crimes, and then they end up getting prosecuted. I can think of one example that I'm aware of, which is Jack Abramoff. And if you don't know who that is, we could, you know, he was like the, the, one of these huge lobbyists from the uh, late 90s, early 2000s. He ran DC. He was like this stone corrupt DC lobbyists and they just doled out money. They just bribed for votes, bribed for votes, bribed for votes. And when they got exposed, it turned into this, e this enormous thing. What's crazy is how, uh, how deep the whole thing went. And then they tried to bottle it, whatever. Bottom line is he actually did get prosecuted. Aside from him, he is literally the only one that I could think of that actually went to jail. All these people, they go up there, they do this little parade and dog and pony show. And they're like, Oh, yep. They got their comeuppance. And you're like, hang on a second. So, to get into specifics here, right? Fauci, right? Fauci and his whole team, they funded the research that led to COVID-19. COVID-19 escaped a lab, whether it was on purpose or not on purpose. You know, like people, oh, they would have never done it on purpose. I'm like, oh, China wouldn't have? There's, just, there's no way China would have done it on purpose? I mean, I'm not saying that they did. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know anything, right? I don't know anything. But like, does that seem totally impossible? It seems like the world's changed pretty drastically since 2020 and definitely not in the direction of America being the largest power in the world. Seems like there's a big transfer of power. Seems like we could transfer it right back to there. The people who benefited was the, you know, was the country where the origin of the virus was, you know. I don't know, dude. I don't really believe in coincidence, but nonetheless, right? But we definitely funded that research through the EcoHealth Alliance and Anthony Fauci is in charge of that. And he was directly in charge of all of it, right? So when the entire thing started, you have these emails, got like this whole thread of emails between the scientists that are like on the inside and they're like, yeah, dude, you know, this couldn't really happen naturally. It doesn't look like it's almost certainly a lab leak. And they're like, okay, but blah, blah, blah. And they're literally talking about how they are deleting all of the emails that would incriminate them in advance of a FOIA request, which is a freedom of information request, okay? 
So FOIA means like they know that at a certain point, people can request all of their data and all of their emails. And they're like, we got rid of them, dude. So don't even worry about it. We had this girl in the, in the department. They literally say that they had a specialist in their office who was a specialist in all the FOIA things. And they, and she taught them how to clear out anything that would be incriminating. They're very obviously talking about their own connection to this entire thing. And then they're talking directly about Anthony Fauci. They're all, don't worry, man. He's way too smart to get caught. You know, you're going to have to bring him things. And I mean, like they're, they're just absolutely 100% stone, stone caught on that. And then that they covered up, you know, where it came from and, you know, they 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 made it to where anybody who said that it was not a lab leak was thrown off social media, so on, so forth, etc. Same song and dance that you guys are all aware of. But now it's like the evidence is just all coming out and being thrown in Anthony Fauci's face. And he's sitting there like, I've been facing death threats to my family. And, you know, it's just crazy because all I did was try to help. You're like, all you did is try to help. You're You're going to stick with that, huh? Hey, what was your involvement in making it to where if people did not take the shot, they got fired? What about that? Any Anything about that? Hey, what was your involvement in, um, you know, doing specific research into potential side effects? Did you have anything to do with that? Like, or the absolute stone lack thereof? What about uh, anything having to do with, uh, you know, demonizing anyone who said that there might be other treatments that were not the shot? You have anything to do with that guy? Are we really going to play this game? We're actually going to do this. You're, you're really going to sit up there and pretend that you were not spearheading this. Really? This is actually happening. So anyway, uh, that's what they're talking about. Let's continue. I mean, they what they did was insane, and they did it in front of everybody. And finally, Fauci has to talk about it to people. But he's still in denial about all of it. There's no he's not in denial. He's lying. <laughs> like, he's not in denial. He's lying. No science that says that masking for children works. There's no science that says that vaccinating children works, that it's good, that it's overall good. And the amount of people that have gotten wrecked by this, they're starting to recognize it in other countries, and they're talking about it in other countries. They haven't quite gone public with it in all the newspapers in the United States yet. But in the UK, they're, they're blaming it. There was the thing about Germany today. There was a front page of like a major newspaper. Somebody sent it to me. I'll send it to you, Jamie. Um, but they're finally starting to talk about it. And they're talking about excess deaths in the Philippines. They're talking about the amount of people that are uh, no longer um, having children, the amount of uh, less children that are born. Because one of the side effects that is claimed uh, is uh, it wrecks women's fertility. And it, it wrecks men's fertility too. It's just it, it, the baby numbers are down by a million. Too, but I couldn't tell what newspaper it was from. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I, be, look I bet if you right take there. the the yeah. title, okay. researchers from the Netherlands analyzed data from 47 Western countries and discovered there have been more than three million excess deaths since 2020, with the trend continuing despite the rollout of vaccines and con containment measures. Experts said the unprecedented figures raised serious concerns and called on governments to fully investigate the underlying causes, including possible vaccine harms. This is wild stuff, man, because, you know, now that we're getting an understanding of how much deception was involved, like trying to blame it on a natural origin when they clearly knew it was a lab leak and they still don't say it's a lab leak and here's the thing dude bottom line bottom line if they would lie that much right intentionally lie that much about the origin of the virus okay think about it like this if they would lie that much about the origin what do you think they would do if it turned out that the the sole thing that they've said, the only way out of this is if you guys do this thing that no one's ever tested. Like, this is the only way out. What if it turned out, hypothetically, that it was giving heart conditions to kids, you know? Or what if it turned out that athletes, you know, that, that getting an inflamed heart was a consistent side effect. And then if you're an athlete who is constantly putting pressure on your heart, so, you know, you take a break from practice, you go and get the shot. You go immediately back to strenuous, strenuous athletic, you know, athletic work. And so your heart is bam, 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 like it always is. 
Except now you've got this foreign thing in there and it just starts to cardiac arrest people's hearts. Like, let's say hypothetically that that was a thing. What do you think they would do to make sure that didn't come out? You know what I mean? What do you think they would do to cover that up? What would they do to avoid that being put on them? If just the origin of it through funding was that big of a deal. Where they went all in, you have to get this. You have to get this shot. You have to. If you don't, we will literally bar you from fucking society. We'll bar you from society if you don't go into this, if you know, if you don't do this thing with us. And people were like, dude, I don't really feel comfortable doing that. I don't, I, I already had it. I don't feel comfortable. Oh, you're out then. You're out of society. We fled California. My family fled California. Okay. We had to. Because our kids, this is even before, before the pandemic, our kid had a bad reaction to one of those things. So we had to go. Because they had already taken away our right to go to school. The kids couldn't go to school if they didn't go against doctor's orders. And then this whole thing, we were out, dude. We were out. But in all seriousness, just try to, like now as this all plays out, and it's like, you know, slowly but surely, they expose the level of deception. And it's crazy. Like there are lots of people that I know who are really smart people. But we're on the other side of me during the pandemic because they had, I don't know. I don't really know why, to be honest. I, actually, yes, I do. I do. Because I know what, I know the reason why I was on the side I was is because I'm married to Gabrielle. And she had been neck deep in this stuff for years. I probably would have been on the other side for a while. <laughs> you know, maybe. I don't know. I mean, it was pretty clear there was bad stuff going on. But now all of them are over here. Every smart person has figured it out. This was, this was their ultimate death touch was this whole thing that they did over here. You know, like what they did killed their credibility permanently. You can't tell people that they have to do a thing that they don't understand or lose their job. You better be fucking sure that the thing you're making them do is not going to blow up in your face because you're finished forever if it does. And it did because if nothing else it didn't do what you said it did. You said it would, oh, you said it would stop the spread. Oh, well, it didn't. You said that it would make people, you know, not get it. Well, no, no, it didn't do that. That's definitely not what it did. Didn't do that. Anyway, let's talk about something else. Now, before I switch topics, I have to say that Donald Trump right now is facing jail time because he paid a porn star 150th or what, I can't even remember what the number is, 100, $115,000, $125,000, whatever, to not talk about a night of a tryst that they had. And then his attorney told him it was legal to do whatever they were doing and then file it this way or that way, whatever. And he paid him in for legal fees, right? So Fauci, I'm sorry, uh, you know, Cohen goes and pays Stormy Daniels. He says, don't talk about this. Donald Trump pays his attorney legal fees. That's what happened. He's facing jail time. Anthony Fauci, Okay, Anthony Fauci funded gain of function research after being after it was illegal. He did it with a foreign enemy in China. The the virus leaked and caused a global pandemic, which we still are reeling from. We locked ourselves in our homes for multiple years at his behest with no science behind it. He forced us, forced us to take a shot that had no, you know, like, well, um, didn't have any long term studies. Right. He buried all of the evidence about him funding it. He covered this up, covered that up. He completely, but he's not facing jail. Trump is, he's not. Think about that. All right, that's enough pandemic. I'm calling it an audible here. I want to actually cover this part where Rogan and Dave Smith talk about the global heroin trade and, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the powers that be, their involvement in said uh, global heroin trade, because this is very interesting right here. Why don't you watch this real quick? Was, and then when you find out they were right, at the, at the end of it all, when you find out many, many years later that the Gulf of Tonkin was a false flag, you're like, what? Which they didn't even need in order to be right. But then you find out, you're like, oh, oh the whole thing God, was The whole thing. And but, then you go, what did you guys do with all that heroin money? Yeah. Where did all that money go? Because if I was the government and I was willing, just imagine. It, Keep in mind, at the same time, you know, like, uh, or very soon, you know, very soon after, the CIA was absolutely 100% involved in the cocaine trade. That's a fact. 
There's no, there's no denying that. There is no conversation there. The CIA was running cocaine and they were taking it from the Colombians and they were bringing it into, and they were putting it in inner cities and the crack epidemic and all that was run by the CIA. And the guy who wrote the book exposing it committed, you know, he uh, offed himself and guess how he did it? He did it by the tried and true method of shooting himself twice in the head. So... That's a true story. If uh, Eisenhower's correct, which is insane, how could he be? And that there was a real <laughs> influence of military industrial complex. If I was the military industrial complex and I was willing to fucking start a war with North Vietnam for no fucking reason, for no reason, yep. make no, so 100%, I'm going to kill. X amount of people and a bunch of Americans, and then you're going to actually make these people, these Americans, you're going to draft them and force them to go because they don't want to go. I, you don't think I'd sell heroin? <laughs> like that would be your line? <laughs> do you think? Do you a think narcotic? Well, hold on. <laughs> how much are these guys making? Yeah. How much are these fucking dudes making? How much? A lot. How many billions? This is a what percentage of the world's heroin supply? And then when you see the same trick played out in Afghanistan, when you like, my, my favorite was Geraldo Rivera interviewing the troops, rationalizing why they had why to they guard, had to the, guard the, the poppy fields. Cop, poppy fields. Yeah. They, we have to guard the heroin. Yeah. For the good folks. Well, I couldn't. <laughs> this heroin falls into the wrong hands. It could be lethal. There's no way America would sell this heroin. Yeah. There's no way. The, the, the output of heroin out of Afghanistan, I want to say it was a 96% increase. No, it's a. It, I'll I'll stop you guys there. It's a ninety something percent decrease uh, when we pulled out. I believe is the accurate one. But the point is this, dude. Here's the point, right? The world that you think you live in is not the world that you think that is not the world. Like the world you live in is not the one you think you live in. Okay. It's like if you if you look at the world like I do, which is to. Think about what I would do in these different situations and be very honest about your own flaws, okay? Like, be very honest about who you really are. If you have that level of power, what are you gonna do? Like, what are you gonna do? I don't think that there's a world where uh, it would be beneath me to take over a global drug trade that already exists and is going to exist either way. If I'm like, you know, and I've got some story I could tell myself about why it's a good thing to do. I always have to back into there being a reason, you know, when I'm trying to like figure all this stuff out. It's like, all right, what's Anthony Fauci doing? You know, like obviously, oh God, I, they also said in this thing that Fauci's worth 11 million. Yeah, fucking right, guy. Yeah, right. Fauci has I can't even imagine how much money Fauci has. It's just hidden in other people's names and in different shell corporations that he doesn't own on paper or whatever. Yeah, right, dude. That guy has controlled billions in budget every year for the last 250 years. He's a vampire. That guy has so much money. It is un unbelievable. The, the, the idea that he is worth $11 million because of his book deal is so ludicrously obscene. That's what I'm saying. Just put yourself in his position. You're, you you control, I mean, I can't even remember what the budget is. Outlandish. I, my, it's like, I actually don't want to look it up. So let's just pretend it's $8 billion. It might be way more than that, right? $8 billion a year. It might be 50. I have no idea. But if you control $8 billion in budget a year, actually, you know what? I do have to look it up. Hang on. I changed my mind. It took too long. Okay, so here's the thing, though. Think about it like this. The people that he's interacting with are the CEOs of these pharmaceutical companies. Billionaires billionaires and they have to kiss his ass because what ends up happening is the way the you know the taxpayers fund the research then they get the patents and then the pharmaceutical companies are the ones that distribute it and whatever and so you're telling me that anthony fauci who's in charge of you know distributing all the funds that have to do with all the research and all the grants and all that stuff he's going to be distributing these grants and all these patents and all these things to all these people who are billionaires and he's going to sit there on his four hundred thousand dollar a year salary yeah fucking right is that really how you think humanity works is he mother Teresa? No. So give me a break. Anyway, that's probably enough for today. I love you guys. Bye.